such a pleasure to be back here, and there's so many of you um, that I need to thank for how we got from point A to point B that you'll see today. I want to first introduce my Marine. I know that he belongs to the whole organization, but he's really my Marine. <laughs> and Eric Kasnerzak, who joined us full-time in January, who I recruited in August, and one of these days, Eric may tell you the story about how he came to my office, I gave him all of the load of everything. He said, take your time, think about it, let me know if you want to join us. And when he got home, there was a call. Well, what did you think? <laughs> Actually, she sent me an email and said, I don't have time to wait. I'll have to find somebody else. That was about six hours. Six hours after I got her 40 minute dissertation on what it is that we're going to be doing. So. Exactly. exactly. We've been together ever since I think. He said to me, he goes, Well, you know, I'm just a pole walk in the trenches. I go, I was born and raised in Poland, Ohio. We're perfect. I can pronounce your last name. So we did. <laughs> then we have a new recruit brought to us, just courtesy of you all. We have gone. Um, Juan Villarreal, sorry about that, who I just met today. Um, <laughs> he is U.S. Air Force 23 years. <laughs> the Colonel really likes him. He works with the Asherton Group, and he's going to, as he agreed to, as he was walking in from your table here, help us get some of our heroes who are going to be hired by Cardinal Health some housing at the Asherton Villages. So we are very happy to have him. He was uh, trained one of my places, Lackland Air Force Base. I love the San Antonio, Texas area, and he's a med tech, so he's going to be very helpful to us. So, you know, always recruiting, always recruiting. Um, I have to thank a couple people here. Mohan, I have to thank you for your continual emails, and I get kind of choked up about how many people have followed us. The Colonel, of course, Faith Williams, I would not be where we are here without the four hours that Faith spent at a Panera with a grant writer, Don Slobodian, um, about two weeks after this meeting three years ago. So, I mean, I really, really thank, thank you all. I have um, what Eric calls future ops. I think of where we're going to be six years from now, and I need all of you to say, okay, here's where we are today, here's what we need to do today, because I'm sitting there thinking, okay, we are, mark my word, changing the military separation process in the United States of America once and for all. And I'll tell you how we're going to do it, okay? Because we're really very lucky. You know, you don't want to get an Irishman from Dublin, Ohio. You don't want to get up their dander. So when the VA respectfully hired me and fired me from my volunteer job because I was diagnosing too many young heroes with traumatic brain injury, I said, you know, something about this picture doesn't work, particularly when you fire me on St. Patrick's Day. So we had a very interesting time. We were able to have um, our documentary filmed. And what I learned from that, and what I learned a lot from Faith, is having a camera and a mission can get you into a lot of places on Capitol Hill. So we were, we were very lucky with that. We say at Resurrecting Life Foundation, we love Congress and the Senate. They have been very, very good to us. So we're talking about our program, which is an employment initiative to brag about, from commanding officer to chief executive officer, and that's exactly what we're doing starting here in Dublin. Okay. So we know the facts, and a lot of this I won't go over because I know time is limited, but with 2.5 million people deployed and having to have about 30% of them having either PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, which we have proved since 2012, is a traumatic brain injury, a certain type of traumatic brain injury, um, and TBI, we have our work cut out for us. There are 750,000 young men and women across the country currently who have this disorder. There's a lot of Vietnam vets who we've actually worked with as well who have had it since the Vietnam era. And I know that Rotary is, one of their missions is peace, and if there is anything more international than stopping this process, because as you will see, we're having issues, and we are being contacted not only from 28 states in the United States, but multiple countries as well. So we became the 501c3, which wasn't an easy task. If you recall, we were one of the Cincinnati group that was kind of, you know, held off because kind of our name, Resurrecting Lives, and we had you know, uh, Eve Stratton, the Justice of the Supreme Court on there. That, But I think what happened is they looked at my roots and found out I was, you know, a blue person from Youngstown, Ohio. <laughs> Let us kind of slide on through. So we were very lucky with that. You know, we, in the civilian world, yeah, nobody's ever accused me of being politically correct. That is for sure. We are 99% of the resources in the civilian world. We have 1% of these heroes here at this table and others of you I know throughout the group who have joined the military. It is time to bring the two groups together. 
traumatic brain injury, post-traumatic stress disorder is a multidisciplinary issue. It requires therapists, it requires job coaches, it requires people helping with employment. It cannot be done within the military itself. So we decided we were going to bring the DOD and the VA together. And back in 2012, you were the only group that said, yeah, I think we can do that. I mean, seriously, you and a few little guys at AMVETS Post 26 up in Mansfield said, go for it, that's all it took, and that's what we did. Okay. So we have some issues with our young heroes coming back, so many of them. You know, volunteered after high school. They have never had a job. They have never done anything that either their parents, their teachers, or the military wasn't telling them what to do. So when you bring them back to the civilian world, it's a little bit difficult. We don't have good translation of jobs. Um, we don't have service jobs available, police, fire, like we did in the Vietnam era. So that particular issue makes it something that we in the civilian world need to kind of help them through. And I know Mohan has done this for quite some time, one of the first people to do this. And it really does make a difference. And, and feel free to you know, jump in since you gave back your 25 bucks, you at least have a voice here, that's for sure. <laughs> we have a lot of misconceptions out there too about what PTSD and TBI mean, particularly in the mild range, which is what they are. We believe that veterans are great great employees and associates. And I use the term associates because Honda of America contacted us after they heard about what we were doing with Cardinal Health and said, you know, we just had 20 people walk off the job in one area today after working for a deco 10 days. That will not happen with 20 veterans. I can guarantee it for sure. The veterans follow up orders well. They're very much team players. I said they'd be perfect for Honda of America because they're used to a uniform, you know, um, and they're used to uh, kind of sacrificing. It's a way of life for our service personnel. So what we decided is that actually hiring veterans is not only good for the veterans, it is excellent for the corporation as well, which is how we got our tagline, resurrect a hero, strengthen a nation. Okay, so how did I get to Fort Bragg? Thank you, Congressman Stivers. Uh, Congressman Steve Stivers hosted the filming of our documentary uh, at the Capitol building on 11, 12, 13. And I will tell you that five guys with TBIs went around Congress and the Senate, reaching 127 congressional offices and 27 Senate offices. Our 43-minute documentary took four hours by the time we were done answering questions, and that was a jump start. Um, I also learned that there is a lot of political um, competition. I think I found that out when, in the middle of the documentary, I got a little text that said, Senator Portman's office would like to speak to you when you were done. And about 20 minutes later, I got Senator Brown would like to speak to you as soon as you were done with Senator Portman. <laughs> Great, nothing like this particular issue to bring the country together. And let me tell you, this country is waiting for a cause that will reunite us instead of divide us. And I believe that this one is the best, of course. So we decided to start our Invest in Vets program when the commanding officer, General Joseph Anderson, called me down to Fort Bragg about two weeks after the showing and said, what can you do for my guys? And I'm looking at a room like this of 30 young faces. And, and, and if you know the blank stare of traumatic brain injury, if any of your kids have had a concussion, if they played sports, they, I mean, blank stare is looking at me. And I said, what do you want me to tell the general? And so my PowerPoint went by the wayside, and I talked to the general as if talking for them. They need jobs, and they need help getting them. And I said, we're going to do this. I have a team that's willing to do this. He said, you have your team set up. And I'm sitting there thinking, you know, oh, God, please help me develop a team by the end of this conversation. Because <laughs> I really have no idea. Yes, we do, General. <laughs> yes, we do. And he said, well, that's good, because I'm going to Afghanistan for a year. Can you get it together in a year? And I'm sitting there thinking, OK, we brief. Yes, that we can do. And that's what we set together to see how we're going to put all the pieces together. Because we, we now have a DOD a lieutenant general who's going to be in charge of the forces, that's good, but I don't have the VA and I don't have the civilian world yet. With 8,000 military discharges a year, Fort Bragg is a great place to be. And of course, my Marine here said, well, you can't go there without going down the street to Camp Lejeune <laughs> and see our Marines down there. So we kind of have a joint issue there between uh, Fort Bragg and the Marines. And it's really interesting because we have some companies who will say to us, I only want Air Force. I only want Marines, <laughs> I only want Army. And I said, we can do that, we can do that. Okay, so that was our, our first collaborative effort will be with the Warrior Transition Battalion. I told, originally when I presented this to, uh, 
to General Anderson. I said, what I want to do is put high heels on the ground. You guys always talk about heels. I said, could you be a little more generic? <laughs> You talk about shoes. I said yes. I said, but this, you know, really, this is a woman initiation. We have almost every single hero who gets in trouble. It is their wife. It is their mother who is calling us, and that's for sure. Now I know that there are women who have served in combat. We don't have as many in Ohio who have served in combat because we don't have a major military installation. But I know that they, we have heard from a couple husbands as well. Colonel David Ristep, remember that name, because this man is on his way to the War College and on his way to really big things. He is the Army Corps Surgeon, which I learned was, look, you have the Surgeon General in the Army, Patricia Hirojo, and then three Army Corps Surgeons. And Colonel Ristep at Fort Bragg turned to me at the end of this day and said, you've got to get a CEO to buy into this. Job fairs are not working for our guys because middle management does not want to take on the responsibility if something may go wrong. Because you, know, you see it in the news all the time and everybody throws out the PTSD sign and it's really not true. So that's when we decided to recruit um, Mr. Jockerman. But it was really cool. I mean, Colonel Ristead is really forced to be reckoned with and he is kind of our background. Whenever I have to deal with the DOD, I call Colonel Ristead and he tells me, he takes my sentence, paragraph, and turns it into three very nice polite words. <laughs> and it's worked so far, so we're gonna keep that going, that's for sure. What I told Commanding General is this though, we need to change the entire system from a disability system to ability system. I said, I'm in rehab, we don't care what your disability is. I don't care what your disability is. I want to know what your ability is. And I thought that the invocation today was so beautiful. Where is it? There, it was just, it's really true. Each brain is different. Each person is different. Each person has their own attitude, aptitude, ability, and we need to take that into account when we're hiring, which is something that Mohan has discussed with me via email several times as well. And that's what we want to do. We want to place the man for the job. Uh, I told them, because it was very interesting, somebody at the DOD said, well, Dr. Gordon, what makes you feel like you are qualified to do this? I go, because I did 8,832 Honda physicals and placed them in their job. Yeah, I do feel qualified to do this. I wasn't sure I was, but I didn't want him to know that. <laughs> so what we want to do is eliminate the transition period. What happens right now is our heroes are given a handful of cash and a handful of pills, and usually that includes a whole lot of Oxycontin. And we need to stop that practice. We want each of these people to leave with, here is your plan, you know, soldier, marine, airman, coast guard, whatever, navy. We really appreciate what you've done. And we're sorry that you can't continue in this particular, but we need you in the civilian world. And this is what we need you to do. And you get four days off and then you're reporting. And here's where you're reporting to. And then we give them that. We are very lucky to have Cardinal Health because it is national, in fact, international. Uh, Mr. Jockerman is one of the most incredible individuals that I've ever met. Uh, he is the CEO of Cardinal Health Pharmaceuticals. Um, when we had our first talk with him, it was on St. Patrick's Day. Very auspicious day for me. And things were going really well because I talk really fast and CEOs don't really like that. And I had 10 minutes, so what am I going to do? Until I noticed his Notre Dame ring. And I said, oh, my brother went to Notre Dame. End of story. <laughs> I said, you know, fight on. We are the fighting Irish. This is worth fighting for. And he agreed. He is a, a Navy man himself, uh, really has joined in. He's now also offered to join our board, which was the first person other than Justice Stratton who actually stepped forward and said, no, I'll do this. Um, and I think that we're going to see a lot happening here in Dublin, Ohio because of that. We also got in touch with some of the veteran service organizations. This is something that I didn't understand. And Faith, you really helped me with this three years ago. They fight. I mean, these little organizations fight. You know, they don't join together in many I said, you guys, what you have is a great collaborative effort. Of, why don't you join together on this issue? You can, you know, try to get your memberships or do whatever. But join together in this. We must find a place for our heroes to land after they've served us. Our nation must take care of those who have volunteered their lives for us. And we've been very lucky with that. So, you know, so we have been promised by different, depending on what area of the country our, our heroes will be going to, that we will either get a, an American Legion membership for them or an AMVETS or a DFW, whoever is you know, primarily there in the region. And that has been really, really helpful as well. I did tell the American Legion, though, because they have the biggest footprint, that wherever most of our heroes go, we need a room 
a non-smoking, non-drinking, <laughs> non-swearing room where our young heroes and their families can go. And I said, and we at Resurrecting Lives Foundation will put in video games that are used now in brain rehab that can be done by all of that. And where is Joanne McGinty, who I think is going to be a member here? But she's in a wellness thing, and I was actually trying to recruit her outside there, you know, do some wellness activities. I said, we're going to throw in some treadmills, we're going to throw in some other things, because part of the reason that you don't have a young membership is because that particular lifestyle left a couple wars ago. So I, I think that this will be really very interesting and exciting. And as I tell everybody, I don't have all the answers, but I sometimes talk as if I do. But I only do that to get other people thinking about something that would be better. You know, that is for sure. We were so lucky to have a group out of Cincinnati, uh, Dr. Stephen Pomerantz and the ProScan group. He took care of the Bengals, and they have their MRI machine actually there in Paul Brown Stadium. We were invited down there to see it. And Ms. Dr. Pomerantz said, you know, for your heroes that can't get into this program, we're going to buy the $100,000 worth of software for the special imaging tests, and we will do them free. And he has done that on about 20 of our heroes. His father was a World War II pilot who has, in the Guinness Book of World Records, one of the, I think he's eighth in the nation for surviving a free fall when his plane was shot down. He was very lucky to have awoken briefly to swallow his Star of David before he was captured by the Germans and survived a POW camp. Dr. Pomerantz is embedded in our organization, and he and his group are gonna provide CDs, because I want each and every one of our heroes to have a CD of their medical record to hand to the VA, and a CD of their medical record to keep themselves. No more of this, I mean, you should see my Marines over here. Here's his medical record. I mean, too much paperwork, you lose the meat and potatoes about what's going on. I said, here is what's happening with this person on the CD, A, B, and C, this is what you need to follow. And so that's kind of a change for the military as well. So, okay, so we have all of our veterans hired will be provided with a support group. We had one piece missing. Oh, and my Maria's tell me, hurry up. Okay, we had one piece missing, and that was the VA piece. And again, you know, again, I'm kind of a lucky Irishman from Dublin, Ohio. Uh, Eric and I were at a breakfast, and this one gentleman who was from Taft, the Titties, and Hollister, you know, said to me, oh, you know, I'm going to be retired from Taft, the Titties, and Hollister. He said, oh, you know, doesn't Secretary Bob McDonald's son work at Well, yeah, he actually works for me. I go, okay, could I have his private email address? And I got it. And so one Sunday night after the 60 Minutes was on about the veterans, I sent to, you know, Secretary, dear Secretary Bob, here's what we need to do. I need you to guarantee that our heroes before they leave will have their VA appointment. They cannot wait for six months and then another six months if they miss it and then another six months. They need to have it. And seven minutes later, he answered. And seven minutes after that, the Under Secretary of Health answered, and at 7 a.m. in the morning, my phone rang for the visit from North Carolina saying, Secretary Bob called us last night, can you come down here next week and discuss what you need to have done? So while we have this window of opportunity, while we're really Ohio-centric right now, you know, with his being from Cincinnati, I think it is a really good time to make a, make a jump with that. ViaQuest is helping to collaborate with us right now to help find jobs for veterans. And the thing that we're most helpful about is that they actually have a grant writer. We have been using uh, poor Don Slobodian, bless his little heart, and he's been doing wonderful things uh, for us free of charge. And I don't find that to be you know, the best thing. So we're going to hopefully get some money to start paying him and get grants done. We're going to measure our successes just as you would measure success in anything. How well do they stay on the job and how well do they get along? Again, you've heard me say this, I said this three years ago, the opportunity of a lifetime must be taken within the lifetime of the opportunity. I live by that. We have a great opportunity now, because you know what? We've got an election year. And I said to each of my heroes, and Juan just heard it today, you know, we are gonna put them up to the task and say, what are you going to do to help resurrect our nation? How are you gonna take care of our veterans and our military matters? So these are some of our accomplishments since I was last year in 2012. Uh, we've had over 100 patients and families from 28 states that we have been able to get to services. And when I say the services, I mean emergency services. I mean getting calls at 4 a.m. from a family who has now been loaded into a living room with a semi-automatic weapon in the hand of the veteran who's thinking that ISIS is outside. I will tell you, those are the moments that you just sit there and pray. I mean, it's really true. And with that, you know, has come, okay, why don't you put down your weapon, because I need you to do something for me right now. One of the things that you taught me, Colonel, 
is that if somebody is desperate, give them a task. If they're in the military, give them something. Okay, you can go ahead and take yourself out later, but right now I need you, okay? So if you could just kind of help me out for the day. And then once they get done with that task, then you get a little longer task, and then a little longer one. And so far, so good, you know, yes, yeah, so I go away. But thank you so much for that. And that was the last time that I was here. I would like to say that Beth, I already talked about Operation Resurrection. We did complete our TBI study. Uh, 25 guys and their siblings who did not have TBI. We were able to transport them from Ohio to New York. Why? Because again, I must say, the Ohio State University would not treat them, would not help study them, would not take our money to study them. So we took them to Albert Einstein in the Bronx, and these reports were just at the uh, American Neurological Society meeting in April, showing the DOD clearly there are issues. And not only that, there are issues in the same area, and it is not hereditary because their brothers did not have them. So it was a very, very worthwhile process to do. I say I like to think of myself as a mirror and not too nice a mirror either. You know, kind of like the mirror at the at the fairs, you know, kind of distortive. I say, you know, guys, here's what you're doing, you know. These guys are really injured. You need to take care of them. It is your responsibility. We have some really great legislation, and again, all of the attorneys that have helped me through here, um, Senator Portman was the first. Uh, we were able to work with him, Senator Portman, Senator Brown, Congressman Stivers, Congressman Duckworth, and uh, Senator Joe Donnelly, Notre Dame from Indiana, all utilized our TBI information to incorporate into their suicide prevention and their tracking bills, and that is a first. And that was because, you know, thank goodness we were able to have uh, Congressman Stivers help introduce us to that world. Okie dokie. We have been contacted by other countries. As a matter of fact, right now, I am in uh, the midst of negotiating with Senator Portman about going to the Ukraine. Um, I told him, you know, I'm not really brave, except with my mouth, but, <laughs> but if you really think that I could go there, you know, we'll do that apparently, because again, peace is the issue with the Rotary. War seems to be universal. We now have, because of the Ukrainian uprising, about 3,000 young men locked in big rooms like this in Kiev, suffering from TBI with no way to treat them. So, you know, this is an international event as well. Okay, two minutes. Okay, our, our job, in the future, we'd like to have 11 offices, and you can see them kind of in this PowerPoint here. Uh, the reason why is because with just these 11 collaborative offices, and we're not gonna be the ones who are, we're gonna collaborate with people already in these states, we can take care of 65% of our heroes with traumatic brain injury. The truth is, if you concentrate narrow and deep, which is what we're all about, that's what we're, we're doing. We have our first office uh, in Marysville, Ohio. We are in the basement of the mental health building. Our rent is $234 a month, and we said yes. We are there to say that nonprofits do not have to spend a lot of money. Of course, um, the recent rains <laughs> have done a little bit to my Marines' lungs because in the basement there's water coming out the walls. <laughs> you know, so, so what we'll We're coming to death, right? <laughs> yes, exactly, exactly. So what I say is we are a mission that is for people who want to change the world. You know, How often do you get that opportunity? You really do not. But we have a lot of people listening right now, and again, we've got an election year with a lot of people vying for attention. And I believe that we need to be the voice of our returning heroes because so many of them have lost their voice. And so many of them who went right from high school to the military never gained a voice. You know, they've always been used to somebody telling them what to do. We are 90% of the resources. I know I went through Fast and Furious, but you folks have no idea, because I'm, I'm actually trying to get through this without my voice cracking, but your assistance three years ago was incredibly, I, I think it was a turning point, you know, because I really realized that I needed to get all of these ideas about, you know, into a format that could be utilized. Faith, you were so helpful with that. Colonel, you were so helpful with that. Mohan, these three individuals have been in constant contact since that time, kind of monitoring what I'm doing. You may want to do this or you may want to do that, and, but never saying, never saying, you shouldn't do that. <laughs> uh, that's what I'm really happy about. Thank you all for your health and support. We will be talking more about the employment initiative. Look for it you know, in your newsletters as well as in the Dublin news uh, because our first uh, heroes will be coming to Cardinal Health in August. So thank you all so much. Everybody.